Mr. Knight, although we do agree and, and we're flattered that you think we're both very qualified people, there are some distinctions. The last one that Richard talked about in terms of his self-financed, uh, it would be nice to be able to do that. Uh, I think that the citizens of Knox County and the course of financial records are online and, and there's a wide range of folks that have supported me. And I think that financial support is indicative of the support that I have in the community. Another distinguishing factor is I have been in the community and active in a lot of ways since 1974 when I came back from service in Vietnam. And, and so we, we both have that military service. Mine was as, a, uh, as an enlisted man on an aircraft carrier loading bombs on A6s, but, but that, was, that was a different era at that time. Other ways, uh, of course, having lived in the 5th District since 1982 when Karen and I got married, having raised three children th through uh, the school systems, both public and private in the 5th District. I'm blessed with two grandsons in the 5th District, and, and so we will be involved with the schools for a long time, uh, and, and I look forward to that. Um, and, and then, of course, the background, medical doctor versus the law degree, things tend to be more legal than, than medical, the issues that we have on commission. I've served in other capacities. I'm currently the chairperson of the Knoxville Transportation Authority. We're dealing with a very hard budget there, um, and uh, as, as chair of that board, I, I have the pleasure at times to sit like where Tank sits currently with commission, and, and I'm used to sitting at that podium already. I've, I've done that for four years. I've been chair for a year and a half. In, in terms of budget, I've been the treasurer of the Episcopal Diocese for 14 years, and uh, so I'm used to dealing with other people's monies, and, and I know how careful we need to be with those. Now, uh, neither the lunchbox nor the diocesan budget compares to the county or, or to, the, to the hospital system that Richard worked with, but, but I think what's important is the fact that we've learned to deal with other people's monies and, and, and that we have to be so careful with those. Now that there is um, an energy, I hate to call it crisis, because I think we've, we've been able to, to s sort of see that this has been happening for some time. But now that gas is so expensive, now that we are looking for ways to be more creative with energy, what do you envision Knox County's role in all of that as being? I mean, are there ways that we can become more green, if you will, to use the, the wonderful catchphrase that everyone is using these days. Are there ways to do that without just doing it to pander? Are we doing it in a way that's going to make sense? Um, are there ways that we can improve the way that we are taking care of the environment? Are there ways that we can improve the way that we deal with energy in the county? Um, I'm just going to throw that out there and see sort of what you envision as far as Knox County's role, Mr. Sproles. Well, I do think there are ways to, to be green without doing it to, to pander, uh, but because I think anything we do do uh, is beneficial. For example, the Lunchbox restaurants, we talk about my successful business, my, my wife and I are involved in those. The two stores that have kitchens recycle all of our steel cans, all of our glass, all our plastic, all our cardboard, uh, and I, that's crucial. I, I mean, and, and the county could do that kind of thing. And you save on your landfills, you save on your costs there, you save on um, garbage pickup. You know, you, we can cut it from once a week to twice a month. Uh, you know, you save money. There are ways to do that. The city had a great example when they uh, paid money and, and changed the lights and, and all the traffic lights to the LED lights. And I think it was a $2 million cost. They see that and uh, that they'll break even in two years and start saving money. So there are ways uh, that we can do that. The transit center, we're trying to get it LEED certified and trying to be green there. So, And not only is it good for the environment, at times it takes a little additional money up front, but in the long run, you're, you're saving money. Uh, and, and so you, know, you just have to start looking at specific examples and you need to make the people in all of the departments aware of the monies they can save doing simple things. The, the KUB or is it TVA's current commercial where everybody goes around and flips off lights. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Specifically on the fuel issue, one of the things that we've proposed at the commission, we did decide to delay this until we finished all the other audits because Richard Walls, who's the county auditor right now, has been tied up with that, but we're going to have them review uh, all the vehicles that the county has 
uh, we'll decide which vehicles, some of them aren't very energy efficient, but the engineering department, for instance, needs vehicles that are four-wheel drive vehicles to get out to work sites where they're doing codes inspections. Of course, the police cars have to have uh, certain types of vehicles that they're able to pursue in, but there's many other people, even in the police department, who don't need the fast vehicles. And we're going to do a complete review of that. That's already been proposed, and I support that completely. Uh, we have made some upgrades already at the county at the new Hardin Valley High School, and it did indeed cost more money, but we're going to have a more efficient uh, heating system out there. And I think we, ne we need to look at other ways as we go along. I know uh, Commissioner Mark Harmon has been very interested on any additional funding that we provide uh, through uh, the Public Building Authority to try to make it as green as possible. Sometimes these things that appear to cost more now uh, in the long run do save money, not even at today's uh, rates of gasoline and electrical charges, but when you look into the future, these rates can actually rise even more. And then it, uh, it, you pretty much have an inverse or a flip-flop is where things that cost more now are more efficient. But uh, specifically what we're doing is that we're looking, uh, we're going to have an audit of all the county's automobiles uh, as soon as these other audits are completed, and he has the time to devote to that. I went to uh, Chattanooga recently. Um, I've been there a few times, and I love walking around in their, you know, downtown area, the way that they have redone that. And obviously Knoxville, the city of Knoxville, has done some, some really cool things downtown as well. I mean, we have the, the fountains by Volunteer Landing, and we have uh, the fountains at Marcus Square. Of course, I have kids, so I know where all the fountains are. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we also have had a lot of um, a lot of sprawl for a long time, where we've just let people, you know, develop out as far as they could go west and as far as they could. Do you have a vision um, for how we can make things more? I don't know. Uh, we talked about pedestrian friendly. Uh, I don't know that that's something that we'll see in the fifth district anytime in the near near future. But do you have a vision for a way to make the fifth district more friendly for for walking around and hanging out and exploring with your kids? You know, it's interesting, uh, Catherine, that I've asked that same question. 